Welcome to the Oxford Clay Pottery Podcast. I'm Catherine Tomlinson and I founded an eco-conscious pottery company called Oxford Clay. Now I don't just make pottery, I make resources such as books and courses for other potters who want to be more eco-conscious in their pottery practice. And that's what this podcast is all about. It's about me sharing everything I've learned with you and I can't wait to get started. Let's go. Hello. So before we get on with the episode, I wanted to tell you about two completely free guides that I've made just for you about pottery. And the first guide is called how to make a pottery glaze. So if you've ever been curious about how to make your own pottery glaze, this guide will show you exactly how to make your own glaze from start to finish. It tells you all the ingredients you need. It tells you step by step how to make the glaze, how to stay safe when glaze making. Um, and it's got a stoneware glaze recipe in there. Um, and if you've been curious about how to fire pottery, um, I have also made a guide on electric kiln firing. So um, this guide will tell you all the different terms that's used in like kiln firing um, and what they mean. And it also takes you through the exact firing schedule that I use to do my bisque firing and also stoneware glaze firing. So it's got all the temperatures in there, all the timings in there. Um, and both of these both of these guides are available from the Oxford Clay website at www.oxfordclay.co.uk forward slash resources for potters. Okay, let's get on with the episode. Oh, okay, so welcome back to the Oxford Clay Pottery Podcast. I'm Catherine Tomlinson and in today's episode, we're going to run through the next um, incredible eight items that are non-pottery equipment that I've actually found in catering shops or DIY shops or garden centres um, that I've just been like using in pottery that I found really, really helpful and I wanted to share with you. So yeah, we've done the, the first eight in the episode before and we'll do like the next eight things now, 16 in total, 16 really cool things that you can use in your own pottery practice that um, yeah, I've been using. So uh, like, yeah, let's go on, get, let's get on with the next eight. Um, okay. Okay, so the next thing is, um, again, similarly on the catering note, I have been using, um, or since, since the beginning of, you know, making anything with pottery, um, I have been using a silicone spatula. And these are originally made for cooking. You know, when you're like baking, it enables you to get all the mixture out of the bowl and stuff. But, um, you know, similarly, it enables, you know, if you're making a glaze or if you're using any kind of like liquid, you know, in pottery, say you're decanting a glaze into a mixing bowl, you want to sort of, you know, paint on glaze or something, and then you just want to get it back into the glaze container. You know, a silicone spatula is so good and it's so good. You can use it for stirring glazes as well. I use mine for like um, stirring my slip when I'm slip casting. Um, I use it for, yeah, like stirring glazes. I use it for, um, you know, getting all the glaze off the side of a bucket. Um, I use it for getting the last little bits out of like, say like a glaze out if I'm making a glaze. Um, they're just so helpful. It's like enables you to kind of not waste any kind of any glaze or slip or anything, you know, that you would normally just like wash you know wash away it enables you to get equipment really really clean like those bowls really clean they are so good <laughs> so definitely recommend silicone spatulas okay so the next thing is um a like just a plastic scoop and i got this um i got a i'm holding up a black plastic scoop that i actually got from uh the diy shop and i think it's it was in the gardening section so I actually think this is kind of for scooping, um, I guess you could use it for scooping soil, scooping sand, scooping grass seed maybe. Um, it was next, right next to this kind of big bag of grass seed. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, like, uh, so uh, yeah, I guess scooping soil is its main use. Um, but I just used this big scoop. Um, it was like one pound um, in the UK. And um, I just use it for scooping, um, 
like anything that I'm making, like the like a slip at, like slip um, or glazes, I'm, I'm going to need to be scooping like dry ingredients. So um, obviously, I've got my FFP3 face mask on when I'm doing that, so there's no you know there's no dust going into my lungs or anything, and I can just I can scoop the the ingredients I need. You know, it's it's a great big scoop that I can just use to scoop the dry powders and like you know tip them into a bowl when I'm weighing everything out. So. Yeah, it's it's much easier than using a kind of small spoon. I can um I can just get you know loads in the bowl all at once, and it just makes it loads quicker. So good. Um, okay, so the next thing that has been so useful in terms of like uh, pottery that's not actually made for pottery is a pestle and mortar. Um, so you can buy pestles and mortars from like this was from a catering shop the one i'm holding up it's kind of made of stone i think it must be made of like marble or granite or something and um you know you can get them made from pottery you can get them um yeah made from like sort of different you know you probably yeah have one like that cast as well but the one the one i've got yeah it's made from stone and i actually use it to crush um glass so sometimes i use glass in my work um, I've spoken about this before in a podcast, but what I do is I crush the glass, recycled glass that I found. I crush it into a powder. I use safety equipment, yeah, like uh, goggles, and um, I use my FFP3 face mask, and I also cover the pestle and mortar with a tea towel, and I basically crush the glass up. Um, make sure being really super careful. There's no chips going out or anything like that. Um, you know, springing out at me as I'm crushing the glass, but I crush it into a powder. You've also got to be really, really careful that you don't sort of, you know, accidentally get the powder on your skin, in your eyes, anything like that. You just do not want that glass powder anywhere near you. <laughs> do not want to ingest it at all. So I'm really, really careful. I basically just scoot a little bit onto some pots. That I'm So I use it basically decoratively. And I brush it into some like crevices that I've made like in pots. So for example, I stamp... Um, like lettering into a pot and then I just brush a little bit of the glass powder in and in the kiln it will melt into the lettering and creates a kind of you know um like a, a sort of even glass surface on top um and yeah it just looks so beautiful so um the, the reason I crush the glass first is that you can get a really even uh, layer of glass if you do that so if you just put like big bits of glass in um yeah like it does melt but you kind of just want like the fine like a fine powder will just melt um into kind of like a really nice layer so yeah so pestle and mortar i would really recommend using that to make your glass powder if if glass is something you wanted to use in pottery i've done a whole episode actually on using glass and pottery um if you're interested in that and it's um yeah it can be really good it can you know you have to like use it with caution and generally you have to use it in a decorative way you can't use it for like dinnerware <laughs> don't use it for dinnerware um and sometimes bits of glass can kind of like come off after it's fired and stuff so you do have to be like super careful but that's why glass powder is really good because it will kind of go right into any kind of decoration say like if you've etched a decoration or something um yeah glass powder is really good because you can just you know push it into those crevices and then it will fire and it fires really beautifully just all melts in there so it's really good um yeah so pestle and water my hero <laughs> like makes making me be able to use glass it's so good um so oh yeah okay so we've done quite a lot of these right let's move on to um let's move on to um right this um, I'm holding up now a slate, right? A flat piece of slate, which is actually, which I actually got from um, like a homeware shop. So <laughs> um, a flat slate, um, like they're actually used as like table mats, um, you know, in like the real world sort of thing. But in pottery, they are so good to put your work onto. So the reason I got these was because I was using like um, wooden boards when I was say like you're throwing a pot on the wheel and you know you want to take it off the wheel um, and you know you you cut it off you put it on a wooden board. What I was finding was that the water in the pot was actually making the wooden boards warp, 
And this is like, this is like a perpetual problem. Like we had this when I used to go to pottery evening classes, we used to have exactly the same thing. We had some boards that were warped, you know, some that were less warped and stuff. And it's really tricky because you don't want your, you know, pot that you've taken off the wheel to be on a board, which is then going to warp because, you know, you want it to be dead flat because that's, that's what you want the base to be like in the end. You know, if it's like on a warped board, that's just like no good. So it just really got me thinking. I was like, well, what could I use that's not going to warp? Um, and I tried for a bit using um, a plastic um, like chopping board and that did that did work. That did work. But then I just I found these slates, um, these slate sort of table mats and they just worked like so well because because of how flat they are and because of just the fact that they were like really really big as well and they were really affordable too um so yeah it's just like a flat piece of slate um you know it's not going to warp because it's made of slate and um you can just like you know cut your pot off the wheel and slide it onto there they work really really well you know if you can actually use them for making work on as well um because they're so flat they're just um they're really excellent for like you know you can do detailed work on there it'll keep the base of your pot really flat and yeah they're a great surface to work off um they're quite the really good thing as well is that they're portable so you can just like pick it up and you can say like put the whole thing on the shelf if you want if you don't want to be like picking up your work you know you don't want to pick it picking up your work and then like you know sort of damaging it maybe if you kind of like moving it you can literally leave it on the slate but just slide the, sh the slate onto a shelf or something to dry um, but yeah, I'd really recommend those. They're really good. Um, okay, so the next thing is just a normal tea towel. So tea towels, you know, you can get it from anywhere really, like supermarket or something. Okay, maybe not anywhere, but you can definitely get them from the supermarket. And, um, you know, quite often in the supermarket, you'll get um, really nice, like cotton tea towels, nice fabric you know tightly woven um not much kind of grain to them they're just a lovely smooth cotton tea towel and those types of things types of tea towels types of fabric are so good to use as rolling cloths so if you've ever like rolled out clay the basic principle of rolling out clay is basically get your very well wedged clay and then um, you know roll it out onto a cloth and that enables you to well first of all it won't stick to whatever you're rolling it onto and then you can actually peel it easily off the cloth you know reposition it put it back down again and then keep on rolling and um, using a rolling cloth is really kind of you know the the basically the best way best practice in terms of rolling clay out it enables you to get a very like you know smooth flat surface it enables you to kind of um yeah like i said you know get it off whatever the surface you're rolling it on and um if you're using a very fine grained uh cloth then you know you will hardly see you, you won't really see any kind of like cloth marks on it you know that kind of impression of the fabric on onto the clay um, so that's why tea towels are so good for rolling cloths and they're already hemmed, you know, so you don't have to like hem them. They're just so good. So but it's like an already hemmed, perfectly sized rolling cloth ready to go is a tea towel. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely recommend tea towels. Um, I actually use tea towels for like all sorts of different uses as well. Like obviously I use them for like drying my hands. I use them for, you know, drying equipment. But I also use them, um, I use them to wrap my work in when I take it to, when I sell my work, you know, when I say like take it to the shop to sell and stuff, I wrap my work in a tea towel and then I can just keep on reusing that, you know, I don't really, I don't need to use like newspaper or anything like that. Um, I use tea towels for just making like a really soft surface when I'm say like, you know, if I'm making a pot, um, say like I've slip cast something and I'm decorating it, I can just put it on top of a tea towel just to kind of like you know cushion it and I don't want it to like go out of shape and stuff a tea towel is just like a really good surface for it to for it to just kind of rest on you know whilst you're um you know doing some decoration and stuff so yeah tea towels are so good it's so good to have a few tea towels around you know when you're making pottery um and the, the really good thing is like when you set your work like say like on top of a tea towel just kind of like you know like if it's sort of gently drying there the tea towel will absorb some of the water as well so kind of like you know it's still going to be like sort of drying um it's a soft nice soft kind of place for it to dry you know it's not going to get like knocked or damaged and stuff so yeah tea towels are so good um okay so i think we're uh nearly at the end of my like massively long list of uh, really useful things that um that are not pottery but i like you can use in pottery 
and um yeah okay so i think we've just got two more things um so the first one is um again one of these like you know absolute pottery staple things and that is um i don't know if you've seen them but they're like these flexible buckets that you can get so i think they're intended for like you know use in the garden um they kind of have like two handles and they're kind of um they they're flexible so you can kind of squash them and i think the idea is that you can pour out of them so you can pour water out of them you can use them for like hauling kind of like soil around the garden and stuff um so i've seen them a lot in like diy shops and stuff but i actually use these um they're so good i actually just fill one up with water and i kind of use it you know just during the day to kind of like wash everything in and stuff but i also use one for mixing plaster in and that's when i making my um my like plaster molds for casting for slip casting because um the really good thing about these buckets is that you can actually mix up plaster in them and then you can by kind of squashing the sides of the bucket you can actually make a sort of pouring spout and you can then just pour like the plaster really um you know accurately like into um like whatever you're pouring you're pouring the plaster into so um yeah so i've just realized i've actually got another thing to tell you about so it's actually not two more it's actually it's actually three more so the bucket was like the third last one because it's just made me realize that when i make plaster molds i actually i actually use a um, tupperware box um so i basically put the enamel dish upside down into a tupperware box and then i would pour plaster like around the dish contained in the tupperware box um so yeah i've done a whole episode on like how i actually make a one part mold for slip casting um, so if you're interested in that but um yeah like uh, so tupperware pots are like so 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 good in pottery so not only do i use tupperware pots for um for casting into you know because they contain all the plaster really well and then you can you know they create a great shape as well and then you can just turn it turn it out um i actually use them for keeping clay um wet um so if i've sort of half finished making something i'll just put it in a tupperware box or i'll put it in one of those like plastic storage boxes and it keeps it wet you know until the next time i can work on it so um yeah they're really really good um plastic boxes um they're really fantastic in pottery like i've got basically i've got some clay i've already rolled out which i use for um decorating some of my pots um and i cut little shapes out of it and stuff and i actually just have that um just stored in a plastic tupperware box that i just got from the supermarket um and you know the clay stays really wet in there and then i can just open the box you know take a a flat piece of rolled out clay and then just you know cut my shapes out put it back in again you know and just keep it wet and it's really really good it's like it, it means that like you don't have to be like rolling clay out every time you can just keep it wet you know in these in these tupperware boxes um yes the tupperware so so helpful okay so the very last um the very last one on the list is um of things that you can get from anywhere that um that you can use in pottery that are not specifically for, for pottery are makeup brushes um and makeup brushes are so amazing for using in pottery for um glazing right so um in pottery there's this um there's this like specialist brush called a hake brush which is made from like goat's hair um and um like a lot of makeup brushes will kind of mimic this hake brush because they'll be like very big um bushy brushes so if you think about like um a bronzer brush or like a blusher brush or you know any brush that you use for like sort of like you know foundation or something um they are big fluffy brushes that you can use really well for like you know glazing basically they take up a lot of glaze and then you can just brush on the glaze um you know for your pottery so the advantage of using makeup brushes is that quite often rather than you know like specialist pottery brushes quite often they'll be cheaper and quite often they'll be made of synthetic fibers and if you're um vegan if you don't want to use like animal fur or you know in animal hair in your um pottery um practice or you know you're not vegan but that's just not something you want to do you know using animal hair um quite often those brushes you know they're from animals like in the fur industry and captivity and stuff or they can actually be taken from like wild animals as well so um yeah using synthetic brushes are you know it's a really good option they actually last longer as well than animal hair brushes 
um, and uh, yeah, and they're quite often like cheaper as well. So the really good thing about makeup brushes is they're quite often very clearly labelled synthetic or like vegan friendly or something. And so yeah, it's a really good option if um, if you wanted to like a big big brush to paint on glaze with, but you don't want yeah and all hair brushes makeup brushes are brilliant um, and another thing I actually use big makeup brushes for is when I'm slip casting sometimes the clay can get like the liquid clay it's meant to be liquid clay but sometimes it can get stuck in the thing you're casting even in a one part mold where literally it's like an open kind of bowl shape and you know and you're trying to like pour that clay out sometimes it just gets stuck um you know it kind of settles into a kind of a, especially if you're casting stoneware clay it can be a real issue so what i do is i just dip um a makeup a really big makeup brush like a kind of you know bronzer bl blusher brush into um into the slip and then i just swirl it all around or on the kind of on the inside of the shape I'm casting and then I pour it out and it really just helps to kind of loosen up that clay because the brush is so soft as well uh, makeup brushes are so so soft it, it really like leaves a really great surface onto your cast item so you're enabled you know you're kind of brushing the the clay out of the your mold um, and it leaves a really great fine surface and then you don't you don't have like excess clay in your um in your slip cast thing so yeah so makeup brushes are so good and you know you can get makeup brushes like say for example like eyeliner brushes or you know um eyeshadow brushes or something ones if you want to do like much finer work you know you can get like obviously synthetic like artist brushes as well which do a really good job but that you know you can get makeup brushes that um you can still use for like very fine work as well in glazing so yeah that's a top tip in terms of like using br using brushes in glazing um makeup brushes um yeah okay wow so that was a that was a long list and uh luckily luckily we've um split this into two episodes so if you're if you're um, listening to just this one, there's a whole nother episode of like, you know, uh, one to eight. Um, and uh, thank you so much for joining me on, on this episode and, you know, hearing about all the different uh, things I use in my pottery practice that are that are from like DIY shops or like, you know, the chemist or, um, you know, the garden center and stuff. Um, there's so much kind of out there for you um, in terms of like the equipment. You can pretty much use anything in pottery, to be honest, like any kind of equipment, but especially catering and DIY equipment. You know, it, the, it's so good. There's so much stuff that we can use in pottery in those two industries. So yeah, I hope that you've enjoyed like hearing all about like <laughs> the things I use. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for joining me. I've really really love talking to you about this and um, I can't wait to see you on the next episode and until then very happy potting and I'll see you soon bye bye Thank you so much for joining me for the Oxford Clay Pottery Podcast. If you're interested in learning more about Oxford Clay or eco-conscious pottery, there's so much for you on the Oxford Clay website. There's books, e-courses, there's a blog on there, um, loads of other podcast episodes, and I can't wait to share it with you. The web address is oxfordclay.co.uk. I'll see you over there.